right, in this video, we are going to take nine photos and we are going to turn them into an animation. So uh, what we did was we took a picture using a shallow depth of field to a picture that used a deep depth of field and all of the transition that went through in between uh, using various uh, aperture stops. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to select all of these images. Once I have done that, you're going to right click in Lightroom. Uh, this is where at least I imported the photos. We're going to go to edit in and then you're going to select open as layers in Photoshop and then brace yourself for your computer to work for a while. I'll go ahead and fast forward this so that way you guys can catch up once this goes but um, you can just kind of watch Photoshop do some work in the meantime. All right, so all the pictures imported. This is great. I got them all in one Photoshop document so I can edit them easily. Uh, what we're gonna do from here is I'm gonna shrink this picture down because I took us on a full frame camera um, at a very high resolution. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink that so I can do that by doing Shift Command I uh, and that will open up, um, not Shift Command I, who am I kidding? It's Alt Command I um, and that's going to open up our uh, image uh, options and our image size. So I'm going to switch this to a thousand pixels. So that way, whoa, 10,000 would not be good. That would increase it even larger than I already had it. Um, but this document right now is like a gigabyte big because it has so many uh, such large photos that were already in there. So I'm going to shrink this down. It's going to make it way easier to work with. Hopefully, speed things up when we go to render the video later. Um, but we're going to take this now. Went ahead and zoomed in. Um, our whole goal here is I'm going to make a graphic and we're going to be able to see the different f-stops that we used as we started to when we ended and what we're going to do um, is first uh, I've got to create that graphic and then we're going to kind of organize our picture as best we can to make uh, our life easier later. So um, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to go ahead and choose a white fill or actually no, sorry, I'm going to start with no fill and we're going to go with a seven point uh, uh, stroke around this box. So I'll start here and we're going to draw a nice big box right there. That'll be where our graphic is. Whoa, seven points is way too much. Let's go ahead and change that to like two. See how that does. Two should be all right. Okay. Um, and then once I've done that, I'm going to draw another box. I'm gonna just gonna kind of like cut this one uh, like that. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, this is just kind of for fun, trying to dress it up a little bit. So um, rather than just have like text that's random in there, trying to make it look sharp. Okay, so I got this now. I can fill that in. I'm gonna do a solid color so that way I've got two little options here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this properties window and let's go grab the text tool. And then with the text tool, um, we're just going to click here and I'll go with, um, we're going to do F 1.4 because I know that is what our first photo is at. I'll select that text. I'm going to go ahead and shrink it down by clicking and dragging on the option right there. Um, and that should probably fit in pretty well. So I'll grab my move tool. You can also hit V on the keyboard and adjust that. Um, and I'll try and center this up as best as I can. Okay. I'd say that looks pretty good. Um, then once we've got that, I'm gonna grab the text tool again and add a separate thing. Uh, and I just like to add it over in random space over here because if I go over where the rectangles are, it tries to do different things like either align it to the box or center it or do all kinds of stuff in there. And I kind of find this a little easier to go off to the side to just kind of do what I want. Okay, so I'm gonna go with shallow um, and then I'll do a new line depth of field okay select all that shrink it down so it's going to probably fit in there let's go ahead and move this over here uh oh it's white so i'm going to select all of that text i can do that by just double clicking on the icon right there and then i'm going to choose a new color so if i do that i could go click up uh here on the toolbar menu and i'll just make it look like it's see-through right there to the background um, and I'll go back to the move tool and let's get rid of the selection command D um, scoot that up so now we've got f1.4 shallow depth of field perfect um, a nice little graphic that we can use for the rest of this video so um, I'm gonna drag this f1.4 down below these rectangles 
um, and I'm going to highlight all this stuff and copy, or not copy that, sorry, put it into a folder. Okay, so this will be our graphic. I'm going to go ahead and label that by double clicking on that folder icon. And then once we have our shallow depth of field here, I'm going to drag this down and copy it so I have a completely separate version of it. Then select that new version and double click on the text here, have that selected. And I'm going to change where it says shallow to deep. Okay, so now I have. Uh, all the information that I need from that inside of our graphic. Okay, now f1.4 is not deep depth of field, but eventually we'll need that deep depth of field because we're going to show the differences between f1.4 and f22. Now that I've got these set up, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this f1.4 and I'm going to copy it. I have nine photos and I have one version of this and we're going to have different uh, labels for each one of these. So to take this and to copy it, easiest way, I'm going to do Command J and I'm going to do that eight times. So I've got I've got my first copy and then we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to drag these texts uh, between our layers here, making it so that uh, whatever I label will be the top option and whatever. Um, the next one will be will be below the image. So I've got all these set up. So I start at f1.4. I'm going to take these two layers and I'm going to go ahead and group them. And once I've grouped them, I'm going to go ahead and label it. So I'll do f1.4, make my life easy. All right, now this f1.4 copy, we're going to change that. Okay, I can turn off this f1.4. You can see that our image is changing. So um, I'm going to take this, double click on it, delete this f1.4, make it f2 because that's what that picture was taken at. And I'll highlight that. I'm going to drag this down. Label this as f2. Next up, we're going to go and take this guy. Uh, we're going to group those together. This is going to be f2.8. Okay, and then I'm going to go inside of here. I'll turn off my f2. And I'm going to double click on my uh, option here and we're going to go F 2.8. Okay. And then I'm going to click away from that. Let's hide that. Okay. So now I've got my F 1.4. I've got F 2. I've got F 2.8. And we're going to keep working our way all the way down, but I'm not going to waste your time with it. So I'm just going to repeat the exact same stuff that you just saw, but with the correct F stops. Okay, so I've got all my options set. Um, if I go back, I can just turn them on one by one, give it a double check, but you can see we've got each one of these set up correctly, which means now it is time to turn this into a video or an animation. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm going to go up to Window and we are going to turn on the Timeline Palette. The Timeline Palette's gonna show up here at the bottom of the screen. We're gonna go ahead and do Create Video Timeline. Now you can use this option, uh, like this video, uh, the way that this is set up, and it kind of works by like you can adjust like how long you want each thing to play here um, and kind of go through and, and play with that. But I think in our case here, for the way that I have this set up, it will be easier to do this by going uh, instead and switching our view to the frame animation option. So if I do that, then I'm going to select how long I want each frame to play. In this case, I want it to go for two seconds. All right, now that I've got it at two seconds, um, each one of these frames is going to represent like a slide that's a, that will show up. So we're going to set up each one of these slides by turning on and off the right things that we want uh, in our picture. So I'm going to turn on shallow depth of field because that is what f1.4 is. Okay. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new, uh, I'm going to duplicate this selected frame. But once I've done that, I can go ahead and make adjustments to it. So um, this is kind of starting where I left off. So I can turn off the F1.4 
uh, folder and then it's going to leave the shadow depth of field there and have that all set up right. I'll click on another copy of that and then we are going to turn off the f2.8 or sorry f2 so we can see the 2.8 underneath it right so you can see whatever uh, has the eyeball on it no eyeball on those. I'll create another new one and then we've got f4. Um, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to go ahead and turn off so I'll go with a new one here. So I've got f1.4, f2, f2.8, f4, and then when we get to f5.6, I'm going to turn off f4 first. Then I can go up to my graphic and I can turn off shallow depth of field. It just goes away. I don't have a medium depth of field. You could label it that way if you want to, but in my case, I'm going to just skip it. Okay. Um, so we take that. Now I'm going to go and select a new option, turn off 5.6, new option, turn off F8, click on a new option, um, and then I actually want to now turn on deep depth of field, okay? So starting at F11, we'll take that, okay? And I accidentally messed up, so we're going to delete one of these. So I'll take my eighth frame here, I'm going to delete that, so on F... On our seventh frame, I'm going to turn on deep depth of field, and then we're going to create another new layer um, or a new uh, frame. I'm going to turn off F11 so I can see F16. Another new frame, turn off F16 so I can see F22. Now I have nine frames, which is going to be uh, nice and easy to work with. So I can take these. Once I've done that, Okay, I have my video, so I could click on the first one, I could click on the little play button down here, I could watch the video every two seconds, something changes, and this gives me a preview of exactly what it's going to look like. Um, I suggest watching this a couple times just to make sure that you have everything squared away um, and everything's looking like it's going to be exactly the way that you want it after you're all done. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go down to this option here and we're going to convert this to video timeline because video timeline is going to give us some other options that we want to export this, uh, this whole little video that we're making. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to convert everything back to this other timeline option. And then on the right hand side, you'll see these uh, four lines. Click on that. It gives you a bunch of options. We're going to go to render video. Once we go to render video, you can select the name that you want to name it. So we'll so we go ahead and say this is going to be um, Aperture Stops, okay? And then you can select the folder, choose exactly where you want it to go. It's going to go by default to where all the source files were located. And since I imported everything from Lightroom, that's going to be inside of my Lightroom folder, sorted by date, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you might want this to save to your desktop or something different. So you can change that by choosing Select Folder. Um, you can also choose uh, like format that you want to use. Um, you can change um, how you want to like go through these different options. Um, in this case, I just want to leave this as a nice, easy MP4 plays on lots of stuff that'll be easy to work with. So we'll take that. I'm going to click on render now, and then we're going to wait. But I'll fast forward. Okay, we finished rendering. So now what I'm going to do is I can go to the Finder app. I can go to search all my files, um, and you can find basically where you left off. But I know that I have this ApertureStops.mp4. I can open that up. Once I do that, then um, I can go through here. I can click on uh, my play button here. Let this cruise through. And then, hey, I got my video. Everything's looking pretty smooth here. Okay, it's going through, making all the changes. You can watch just a little bit more and a little bit more, get in focus through each one of those pictures. And then we're all done.